Hello and welcome to the topic Introduction to Cells. In this lesson we're going to learn about what are cells and how do they develop. Now in this topic Introduction to Cells let's keep in mind the big idea of what we're kind of learning here and that is how do structures and processes of a cell enable that cell to survive. Now in this specific lesson we'll be learning two things. How did scientists Un how did scientists' understanding of cells develop, and also what basic substances make up a cell. As always, in any lesson, let's start out with some key vocabulary words. The first one is cell theory, and this is a theory that states that all living things are made up of one or more cells, and that cells are the smallest unit of life, and all new cells come from pre-existing cells. So cells create other cells. The next word is macromolecule. A macromolecule is a substance that forms by joining many small molecules together. You also have nucleic acid. Nucleic acid is a macromolecule, and that forms when a long chain of molecules called nucleotides all join together. So nucleic acid is a macromolecule, and it's a, a bunch of molecules called nucleotides joining together. You also have protein. Protein is a long chain of amino acids uh, molecules that contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sometimes it'll have sulfur. You then have a lipid. Lipid is a large macromolecule, and a lipid does not dissolve in water. You also have carbohydrate. A carbohydrate is also a macromolecule, and it's made up of one or more sugar molecules. And in these sugar molecules, they are composed of car carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and they're usually our main source of energy. Our carbohydrates. It's what we burn for energy. So let's go ahead and begin our lesson. Well, there's a gentleman named Robert Hooke, and over 300 years ago he was the one who identified cells, and he basically did this by looking at a piece of cork under a microscope that he actually built. Now once he did this, other scientists of course started looking at other things underneath microscopes that they made. So everybody became interested once he identified the concept of cells. Now, all this led to cell theory, and cell theory has three principles. And these three principles are that all living things are made of at least one or more cells, that cells are the smallest unit of life, and all new cells come from pre-existing cells. So the cells actually make other cells. They Basically, in the cell cycle, one cell becomes two cells. So, key concept check. How did scientists, un how did scientists understanding of cells develop? Well, it all started with that one scientist who over 300 years ago started looking at cork under a microscope. And once he did that and said, oh, look at this, there are cells, all the other scientists began to use much better microscopes to identify other structures on plants and animals. Now, of course, the main ingredient of any cell is water. Now, a water molecule has two areas. They are the negative and the positive. So the negative end can attract the positive part of another substance, and the positive part can attract the negative part of another substance. You've always heard opposites attract. So a positive and a negative will attract to each other. All right? So they will come together. Water and salt have both positive and negative parts as well. Now, when we look at the basic cell substances, we discussed macromolecules. And these uh, 
are formed basically by joining a lot of other smaller molecules together. So by joining a lot of different sugars or amino acids or nucleotides together in a chain, you can form macromolecules. All right. So there are four types of macromolecules. They are nu nucleic acids, proteins. Now, you, nucleic acids are macromolecules that are long chains of nucleotides joined together. All right. Proteins are long chains of amino acid molecules. Remember, we said everything is a long chain. It's all these small molecules coming together in a chain, and each one has different types of these molecules. Nucleic acid has nucleotides, proteins have amino acids. You also have lipids, right? Lipids are macromolecules that do not dissolve in water. And you have Carbohydrates, very important for us. Carbohydrates are what store energy. And they are needed to uh, communicate between the cells. So carbohydrates are a very, very important macromolecule. Now, each type of macromolecule has different functions in the cell. All right. Again, nucleic acids contain genetic information. Okay. Lipids are for energy storage and also for communication. Proteins are for communication, transport, chemical breakdown, and structural support inside the nucleus or the cell. And then finally, carbohydrates are also energy storage and communication and structural support. So all of them have these different functions within the cell. So, and there are many different types of carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. You don't have to really memorize them all. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, something you, if you wanted to learn, you could learn more about uh, polysaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and lipids would be triglycerides, fatty acids, gly 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 glycycerol, and proteins are peptides, amino acids, nu nucleic acids are DNA and RNA, and they are made up of amino acids. So macromolecules can be very, very in-depth, and you'll be learning about it more in other lessons. But the key concept check was just to ask you what basic substances make up a cell? Well, water is the main agreement, but also macromolecules are necessary. Substances in cells. All right. So basic substances, water and macromolecules. So in summary, the cell theory summarizes the main principles for understanding cells or the basic units of life. Water is the main ingredient in every cell. And nucleic acids, such as DNA, contains all the genetic information for that cell. So we hope you enjoyed the lesson, what are cells and how do they develop? And we will see you in the next lesson.